here today with Coach Brad Smithy of the Wolf City Wolves. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Tony? I am doing great. So you've been there at the Wolf City for about two months. You've had a chance to see your kids out there competing in the spring. So how's the spring going so far? Uh, so far, it's been good. Uh, we started, when we got here, we started morning weights. Uh, turnout's been really good. Um, I'm pretty proud of how the guys have handled some of the change. Uh, a little bit different from some of the things that they were doing, but uh, for the most part, they seem to be buying into it and enjoying the the new the newness, I should say. Um, and right now, this past week, we started our boot camp. Now that kind of all the seasons have concluded, and so uh, we're starting to hit that discipline aspect, the accountability aspect, and uh, man, these kids are buying into it and having a good time with it. All right. So uh, if you don't mind, you've had a chance to see some of your kids. You probably don't have everything 100 percent drawn out yet. But uh, what do you think you look like for the fall? Who's going to play your key roles? Oh, we definitely got a lot of experience. Guys coming back last year, they dealt with some injuries. So a lot of younger guys had to step into some different roles and a lot of older guys had to play a lot of different roles. So. I'm excited about the experience that we do have coming back. Um, I know offensively and de defensively, um, we'll have Caden Heron, uh, who will be doing a, a heavy load on both sides. Uh, he was a linebacker for us, running back. Uh, we also have a couple of linemen who will be returning. Um, Alex Puentes, Cody Kilgo, who will be great up front. Uh, defensively, we got a freshman to be a sophomore, H.D. Davis, that uh, is very, very talented. Um, we have a kid named Jarrett Tisdale, who is an all around player, uh, got some very big length at the corners and at the receiver position that I'm excited about with Harry Martinez, um, Landon Tomiello, Kevin Armstrong. I'm, I mean, I'm excited about the guys that we got out there, uh, DN tight end Warren Richardson. Uh, I'm going to end up naming my whole daggum roster if I keep going, but, um, I'm very excited about the guys that we do have coming back and then the guys that are, uh, kind of worked their way up this spring so far. Um, and I do think that we have, a we have the people here as long as we get the, the pieces in the right place that, uh, we could make some noise. All right. So, uh, if you don't mind kind of run me through the district you're in and the competition and what you expect to see from the competition on the field this fall. I think um, district's very competitive. Obviously, we got a, um, a couple top dogs with uh, Cooper, Honey Grove. You know, they've had a lot of success lately. Um, I know Rivercrest will be then at uh, Alba Golden Bowls and uh, Como Picton. Um, and I've really enjoyed getting to kind of watch the film from last year. It's going to be a competitive district. You can tell it's physical. Um, kids are flying around, but – from week to week, you don't necessarily know what you're going to see, which makes it fun as a coach. Uh, so I'm excited for what we're going to see. I'm excited about the competition we will be playing uh, and excited to see, you know, how our boys will uh, get up and uh, compete against these guys. All right. Now, you you mentioned uh, watching the film, uh, which is – that's the life of a coach. I mean, get, game field is – what you do all the time, but how much more of that do you do when you move from one school to another, just to get familiar with your team and your competition? Uh, to me, I do a lot. You know, obviously when you get to a new place, you hear, you know, from coaches, from other players, what, you know, they think uh, kids do well or don't do well. Um, so it's my way to evaluate what I think they do well and what they don't do well and how they've actually performed. Um, and then obviously using that and then seeing how it's translated into our offseason workouts and maybe seeing where they struggle or maybe seeing where those strengths are and uh, trying to figure out where they fall in our philosophy and how we can use them and uh, the best position we can put them in to be successful. And uh, so I definitely think when you move somewhere, you spend a lot more time on it because you're trying to see what kind of player. Uh, I mean, I like watching the NFHS stuff because – you get to see how they act even during the plays and on the sidelines. And to me, that speaks volumes when you're talking about, you know, character and their discipline and you really get that aspect of things. So uh, I dig into it quite a bit. I know a lot of people have different philosophies on that. Um, you know, it's last year's last year, which I agree you turn the page, but it gives me an idea on who I'm coaching um, as a player and as a person. All right. Well, you've literally been around high school athletics your entire life. Your dad, dad was a coach. 
you have a couple of brothers that are coaches. So you, you have your perspective, you have your dad's perspective, you have your brother's perspective that kind of inform, form the way you see things. G- given your perspective from all that, cumulative experience what would you say the biggest challenge facing athletics high school athletics in texas right now is i would say it's the the people outside of it um there's a lot of people making decisions outside of here especially in in public schools um that you know we fear is driving a lot out of the profession uh we always taught the suit and tie people who never actually you know sit in a classroom that are making classroom decisions uh, but what's asked of teachers, what's asked of coaches, um, their pay, their time that they put in uh, is, is really undervalued. Uh, and I would go on a limb and say that this is the most important profession there is. There's no other profession that you get the influence. I would say maybe a preacher has uh, can have more influence on a certain amount of people at one time. But coaches and teachers those people have direct impacts on kids and our future society. And um, when you're talking that we're around those kids more than our own families on a day in day out basis, I really think that when you're looking forward to what's next in, you know, in our world and our nation and all those things, how do you provide the resources for those teachers and coaches to allow us to let these kids reach their fullest potential. Uh, How can we, you know, use the disciplines? How can we make sure everybody's uh, accountable? And as far as learning, um, you know, the voucher system that's came in, I I fear is going to, you know, drive out public school athletics um, because it does allow kids to go into their choice. But what about those public school teachers now? Where does that leave us? You know, does that push us out the door? Because now the focus is on privates and, uh, private entities instead of those public education. So uh, I think there's a bunch of mixture of things, uh, but that's why like my message to people would be uh, stay in it. I mean, you're valued, you're important. Other people may not see it, but we have the most influential profession that directly impacts this world. And I think that we need to be focusing on that message and understanding and overcoming the adversities that we are going to have and push past those because in the betterment of our future, um, that's going to be the right thing to do. All right. So Sorry. Go, I, no, I no, threw no, a lot no. at you there. <laughs> I teed you up and you hit it. You uh, did. <laughs> uh, so let's go from real big picture now to real small picture, try and learn a little bit about uh, more about uh, Brad Smithy. Um, what would you say your number one guilty pleasure is? My number one guilty pleasure. Ah, man, it's got to be chocolate chip cookies. Um, My wife knows to not let me go to the grocery store alone um, because anytime that she sends me with a list, it may be lettuce and milk. I'm coming back with something sweet, and it's usually chocolate chip cookies. It is my absolute favorite. I love it. Um, She hates me for it, but at the end of the day, she loves me for it, too, because she's going to sit there and, and enjoy them with me. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Best of luck as you wrap up the school year there and uh, head into the summer and then the fall. I appreciate it, Tony. Thank you for your time. LoneStarGridiron.com. Access the complete history of Texas high school football, over 100 years of information, win-loss records, coaching histories, individual stats, records, and more. Lone Star Gridiron, the authority on Texas high school football.